next one is another firebrand speaker that we have amongst us shrimati kanimuri karunanidhi ji we may with a huge round of applause welcome the member of parliament from lok sabha shrimati kanimuri karunanidhi ji for her address vanakkam നമസ്കാരം എന്നെ ഇവിടെ ക്ഷണിതച്ചതിന് നന്ദി സ്വാതന്ത്ര്യത്തിൻ്റെ അമൃതമായ ഈ ഉത്സവത്തിൽ പങ്കേൽക്കുന്നതിൽ എനിക്ക് വളരെ അധികം സന്തോഷമുണ്ട് ഐ എം വെരി ഹാപ്പി ടു ബി ഹിയർ ഇൻ കേരള ടു be part of this conference especially in kerala because this land has always celebrated and respected women when i say celebrated it is not celebrating motherhood it is not celebrating the beauty of being a woman but it is always celebrated the empowerment of women and i'm happy to be here and i'd like to thank our speaker the kerala assembly speaker and my former colleague mb rajesh and i also like to show my respects to dr nima ben acharya and our inspiration always respected brinda karat madam lata devi rema chandra priya priyanka ritu kanduri bhushan and all the sisters and brothers here who have come here to this conference i'm happy once again to be here celebrating our freedom struggle and i'd also love to recall women freedom fighters from kerala like akama cherian and one of the first people to get into the constituent assembly in kerala also because sometimes we fail to be inclusive when we recall the names of freedom fighters we think some parts of the country played a less part lesser part in the freedom struggle which is far from the truth because men and women from all around this country and women especially have played a very important part to making india what it was and to get us our freedom which we celebrate today when we talk about constitution and women's rights all the speakers here mentioned that there were 15 women who played a very important part in forming our constitution but i also would like to remind you out of 389 members only 15 of us were women and sadly it continues till today because in many of the law making institutions across the country put together women's participation is less than 9% and when we talk about law making bodies like the parliament uh, the lok sabha the rajya sabha and the state assemblies in state assemblies it is only 9 to 10% and as madam brinda karat when she spoke she mentioned it is around uh, 15.3% in lok sabha and 12% in the rajya sabha we make laws we make laws for men and women of this country laws which change the lives which create borders boundaries which tell our men and women how to behave what is acceptable in this country what will not be acceptable in this country but there are men sitting there thinking for us making our decisions for us how fair is it 
our lives are decided by majority men without women's voices being heard there so this is why we need 33% women's reservation to start with and hopefully we will reach like we've reached in panchayat raj 50% or if possible in tamil nadu i think uh, we've crossed the 50% in panchayat elections and uh, so if possible we could cross that but i think we need equal women's participation in law making bodies in politics to make decisions about the lives of women in this country i'd like to read out a quote from audrey lord a black women writer from america a feminist and a civil rights activist my silences had not protected me your silence will not protect you what are the words you do not yet have what do you need to say what are the tyrannies you swallow day by day and attempt to make your own until you will be sickened and die of them still in silence this is the problem of silence and yet women of this country believe that silence is their weapon silence is the way to live and silence will take them somewhere because patience and accepting what comes as it is is supposed to be part of the greatness of womanhood we should understand that silence and accepting what is given to us as it is is not going to take us anywhere we have to break the hurdles we have to break the glass ceiling tande periyar one of the greatest thinkers of modern india and one great feminist he said whatever is in your way whatever becomes a hurdle to achieve your dreams throw it away break it nothing should come it can be anything it can be religion it can be family it can be beliefs it can be tradition it can be culture but don't get feel fear don't be afraid through to throw anything which becomes a hurdle to you i think women of this country have to stand together like um, brinda ji and the um, other speakers here mentioned that we have to come together beyond parties beyond beliefs beyond religion beyond state beyond language beyond caste together as women as oppressed people of this country we have to come together bring our voices together and say that we are here to stay and we will claim our rights because the constitution the constitution promises us many things the constitution the preamble of the constitution of india assures justice social economic political and equality of status opportunity and dignity to the individual including women and men but in reality is there justice is there equal opportunities is there equal economic progress and enough space for all of us men and women in this country we are discriminated on the basis of gender we are discriminated on the basis of religion on the basis of caste we haven't been able to do away with caste system with religious biases racism and gender bias we are celebrating 75 years of independence of our freedom but the freedom has not come to everybody it is very important the constitution is there to protect us the constitution promises us many things but unless there is a political will and unless 
there is a social change whatever has been promised to us can never be achieved is what i'd like to say today women do enjoy a lot of powers from what compared to our mothers and grandmothers but these rights have not come easily i'd like to quote the case of muttama versus the union of india this woman muttama she wanted to join the indian civil services she writes her exams and she goes for her first interview say the chairperson of that talks to her and very kindly very nicely says you want you applied for indian foreign services you're a woman i mean you should not be going there so i have done you a favor so i have told the person who is going to do your next level of interviews for indian foreign services to give you the minimum marks as less as possible so that you will not qualify to become part of the indian foreign services i'm doing you a great favor because you are a woman but then his recommendations thankfully did not work and she came as the topper of the list and she joined the indian foreign services but then before she joined the service they said she had to give it in writing that she will not get married without their permission and she was denied promotions for 30 years because she was a woman and she got married finally she had no choice but to go to the court in 1979 she goes to court and fights against the union of india and then she wins and we know about the case against the indian airlines air india where air hostesses had to resign if they got married or if they became 35 years of age so that was another case these women had to go to court and fight so it has not been an easy space which we have created today there was a devadasi system in this country young children were given as offerings to temples and uh, later it became uh, children when i talk about children i only mean girls the girl child was given as an offering to temples and then it became a caste system by itself and these women were married off to the god and then it did not unfortunately stop with the god but then they said we need it because we have to hold up the culture the tradition of this country so dr muttalakshmi reddy the first women representative to be elected to the constituent assembly she brings a bill in the tamil nadu assembly in 1920 saying that this devadasi devadasi system should be abolished a person in the opposition who spoke against her got up and said this is a service to god so how can you say this system has to be abolished immediately dr muttalakshmi reddy got up and said our women have served god for a very very long time now it is the time for your women to serve god of course the devasdasi system abolishing act was passed and today still there are women sex workers in society who do not have any rights who do not who, you whose children have no future 
because they are not recognized they 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 cannot turn anywhere for their rights the society does not the government the government does not give them any recognition or space or rights and they are abused they are treated violently but they have no way to turn to to and when we talk about women's rights this country is very particular about preserving tradition when it comes to women's rights and women's protection over women in the parliament i have raised questions many times about marital rape rape within a marriage i was quite surprised and shocked by the reply i got they said this is something which we have to think about because this goes against the culture and the tradition of this country this is the reply i got in parliament for a question of mine about marital rape and of course following that there was a there've been many cases and today we've got a judgment they said they're waiting for the parliament to pass a bill but nothing happened then finally we got the judgment where they said that women has no right to raise her voice when she, after she is married and more than that in a marriage a woman we say that uh, marriage age for women is 18 and now they're talking about raising it to 21 but in our constitution a woman who is only below the age of 15 can be raped by her husband if you are above that it's not considered rape so there are so many questions about right about the protection about the violence against women which are unanswered when coming to the 33% women's reservation this is one bill supported by all par- political parties across the board maybe there is an exception of one or two who have certain objections to it all political parties have it in their election manifesto that we will bring 33% women's reservation but that is the only bill which we have not been able to pass and i don't understand why we pass so many bills which uh, the opposition does not accept the political parties do not agree with but women's reservation is one bill which we have not been able to pass in spite of so many people parties coming together and supporting that bill i would like to say that if we do not have equal representation i think none of the bills which are being passed can be recognized without us being heard how can bills be passed which is going to affect our lives the triple talaq bill which was uh, passed in parliament there were so many debates about it but i think it is a woman who has to decide what has to happen because our voices have to be heard when she is deserted when there is trip- triple talaq it is the woman who understand what is more important to her whether sending the person to jail or making sure that she is provided for the, this choice is this debate did not happen many bills which are being passed do not give space for these things to be brought into notice the farm bills today do we talk about women farmers there are farmers across the country women feel uh, farm workers do we even take them into consideration do we even discuss them do we even 
think about then when we pass uh, the b budget or uh, the um, bills about agriculture. No. Women's voices are not heard. Our constitution talks about right. Our constitution talks about protecting us. It, it, it says there will not be discrimination against women. It uh, says uh, that uh, they will not be, they, we will not be forced um, and we will have uh, equal pay and nothing should be said uh, derogatory about and uh, any practice which is against, uh, which is, uh, um, you know, uh, affecting the de dignity of women will not be allowed. But is this what we are seeing today happen in this country? Indecent representation of women. Brindaji, when uh, she spoke, she spoke about uh, what happened to uh, one of my parliamentary colleagues, Supriya Suleji. It is just not her. When we talk about women in politics, when we talk about women in public life, today social media has become a faceless space where you can say anything about women journalists, women writers, women politicians, women speakers, any women who is in public life and do we have any laws to protect these women? Nothing. She, she wanted me to uh, bring a resolution or bring a bill. I, I promise her, I promise all of you that definitely we will bring a bill against shaming women, against passing derogatory com uh, comments in social media, in public platforms about women politicians, about women in public life. It has to be stopped. They, but one thing, People should understand. It will only strengthen us. It is not going to make us shy away and run back to our homes and back to cooking. If that is what you dream about, no. We will also teach you to cook. That is part of the agenda also. But it cannot and it should not shame women. If you talk about our characters, character assassination, you, uh, men think that it is a weapon they can use against women and they can send them back to their homes. So laws have to be thought about. There are many laws. We have to create awareness about it. Uh, when we brought laws about uh, property rights, which women did not have, about, of, uh, you know, regarding their ancestral, I think in Kerala was one of the first states like Tamil Nadu to pa pass the bill. But is there awareness about it? Have we taken it to these women? How many of them are even aware that they have a right to their property, the uh, property of their parents? So, just passing bills, changing, bringing um, amendments is not enough. I think awareness the awareness should start from schools, should start from homes. Only then we can see the change happening. And I'd like to finish with the lines of Dr. Ambedkar. Be educated, be organized, and be agitated. Because education makes us understand where we are and where we have to go. And coming together gives us a strength that we are not alone. And we have to agitate. We have to break away from that silence which has been imposed on us. And like Bharati said, if we do that, and all the best to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that uh, very wonderful words.